Okay, so that's roughly all the gear you need to do a single pitch of recreational rappelling. Now I'm gonna go show you how to set up the anchor and uh, how to set up your rappel and how to zip on down. So first thing I'm gonna talk about is how to set up a rappel extension so that way we can be safe while we're out at our anchor rigging up our rappel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my nylon sling Remember, we want to have two nylon slings, so I'll find this bar tacking right here, go a few inches past it, and then with my harness, I have this big belay loop, like I said, and then these two uh, power points. So I'm going to pass that up through one, and then up through the other. And you see, I just put the big end through the small end. That's what we call a girth hitch. And now, you can see my uh, bar tacking is right here. I can just go up a little ways and tie an overhand knot. Here's one more time, just for clarification. So I'm going to take this, make a loop, and pass this end through that loop. Now we have an overhand knot. The only thing to keep in mind with this overhand knot, it's dividing the sling into two loops, and we want the loop that's further away from us bigger than this loop right here. That's the only thing with the knot. I like having my knot about nine inches from my harness personally. We take a locking carabiner and clip it to our loop, and then that's how we're gonna connect ourselves to the anchor. We got a bit of gorilla style camera shenanigans going on but uh hopefully it's not too crooked so you guys can see how i just clipped myself into this bolt right here as i stepped around the corner and now my back is actually hanging out into the place we're repelling yes i'm only clipped into one bolt right here um i used uh, another carabiner this is why it's nice to have extras you can see i'm like clipped in just like that so if i wanted to i could always bring this over here and then have my redundant clip-in set up. But the idea with this is just to protect ourselves while we build our anchor that we're gonna rappel on. So the cool part about these anchors is there's actually little uh, wrap carabiners that are permanently fixed on here. So if you were rappelling, you could just stick your rope through these two things, flick the rope to the middle, and then rappel down. So I'm gonna show you that. I have the end of my rope right here clip and clip good habit to get into is to tie stopper knots in the end of your rope just like so it's a double uh, some people call this a double fisherman's other people call this the double overhand double barrel knot if you look up any of those terms you should see this knot and then uh, make sure you have about 8 to 12 inches of tail on it usually the thinner the rope the longer the tail you want now I'm just gonna pull rope through. You can pull rope through until you see the end hit the ground. If you have a friend down there, they can yell up that the end is on the ground. Or if you're alone, it's kind of better to be safe than sorry and just go to the middle of the rope. Most ropes that you buy on the market should have a middle marker. You can see this one has this yellow part. So I'm at the middle of my rope. I'll take the other end and flick that down. There you go, got the end of the rope. Just tie another double barrel knot right there and then throw it down now if you're rappelling with other people at the crag it is a good courtesy to shout out rope before you drop the end of the rope because that actually does hurt when it hits you from so high up falling down but there's no one at this crag so that's why i didn't say it <laughs> from this point since i have my rope weaved through these chains i can just rappel set up my rappel and go down i'm gonna talk to you about how to do that later in this video but this is kind of, if you can find an area like this where you can get to the top, put the rope through the chains, and then just start rappelling, that is a pretty nice option. It's pretty fast, and then you get what you're doing uh, super soon. Uh, but however, there are some top area, top managed areas where it's just bolts and no chains. So if that's the case, I wanna show you how to build an anchor so that way you can put the two bolts together and then rappel on that. Okay, so back at the back at the anchors now I did the same thing where I stepped or I clipped myself in and stepped around the corner uh, my two points of protection right here 
Um, and so now using the chains to actually build an anchor. This is where that other gear comes into play. I have my two non-lockers and I can clip these straight into the bolt like that. And here, do it like that. This takes a little bit of assessing, but ultimately I want that gate to not be able to be interfered by the rock. So I stuck the spine of the carabiner right here up against the rock. Next thing is I'll grab the rest of my anchor kit, two lockers and a double length sling. Double length sling, I'll take the bar tacking right there and I'll clip it up high, close to one of the carabiners, pull the rest of the strands down. And then now I have my V and find my rough direction to pull, which is out this way. Side my hands up and do an overhand knot or a figure eight with all of that right there. If you want me to go more in depth with anchors, I have a separate video on that. Actually, pretty much all these skills, I have separate videos going more in depth for. These, this is all just brief overview. So now I got my little loop right here, which is my master point. I'm going to clip two of my lockers in that point. I'm gonna have them opposite and opposed. So that way, if I open up the gates like this, see how they make a little X. And that's where the middle of my rope goes into. There you go, I just so happen to have the middle of my rope right there. You can see it. And then now I'm ready to push the rest of my rope off the cliff and then actually set myself up for rappelling. There we go, excuse the gorilla style angling of uh, the camera. Again, I don't have a cameraman out here with me. Uh, like I never do in my videos. <laughs> it's just, I need to get more friends. And so <clears throat> I've done a few things to sort of change up my position. One is you can see I clipped my personal anchor into the master point of the original anchor. That's just, that's another way how you can clip into the, you can clip into the same point where the ropes are hanging. And then that can help you sort of like move a bit further out to set up your rappel easier. Uh, that's another great part about having two specific clip-in points because I could keep this clip to the anchor and then bump this one down to the master point and then unclip this from the anchor. So it's just another reason to carry more than uh, four lockers, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, to carry more like five or six is a useful number. Anyway, I'm moving on now. I'm actually going to set up the rappel. So I need my ATC. And a good habit to get into with this thing is always having it clipped to something because you don't want to accidentally drop it. Otherwise, you're, you're walking back down. So what I did is I just clipped my ATC to my bottom loop right here. You can see how it stops at my knot. My knot is right here. And then this is the upper loop I was talking about. And notice how this loop is smaller than this one. That's another point of neatness. So now what I can do is load up my ATC like I normally would. I go, it can be a little bit hard with the weight of the rope underneath you. make sure that's locked all right great so I got my ATC loaded I can even double check that both strands are going through the hole and then around the carabiner and the carabiner is locked so a lot of people just start repelling like this and it can be a little dangerous because you have nothing backing you up if your, your friend was on the ground giving you a fireman's belay then that counts as a backup you can repel but if you're doing this alone by yourself you're gonna need another way to back up yourself on this rappel. And that's where the third hand comes in handy. All right, so I re-angled the camera here so you can see my belay loop. Uh, you'll notice how I have the extra bit of the sling right here. I ran out of lockers, so I just, I'm just gonna use a non-locker to clip that to my belay loop to keep it out of the way. It's not doing anything like holding my weight or anything right now, so it's okay to have a non-locker. But that's just another reason to have more lockers with you. However, I do want my third hand on a locking carabiner because it's actually pretty critical. Here's my sterling hollow block and I'm going to build a friction hitch on both of these strands of rope. Now uh, the friction hitch of choice that many people including myself use for repelling is called the auto block. And the way how I like to tie that is I start with one end through my locking carabiner and then the other you see this bar tacking right here I slide that all the way to the end and then I'm going to start close to me and I'm going to give it one wrap, two wrap, <clears throat> and then a third wrap. 
Now people will start counting from different points, but that's either three or four wraps depending on how you're counting. Okay, so I went ahead and put on my belay gloves. Generally, I do this whole thing with gloves on, even though it, it doesn't really matter. You could put on your gloves right before you rappel like now. It's just that I have to work with my phone while I'm recording this. <clears throat> All right, so now, before I unclip myself from my anchor, I'm gonna test the whole system. So luckily I already had my ATC yanked up as far as it'll go. And so all I had to do was slide my hollow block up and then now slide it up a bit more. You can see how my tether here is loose. It's actually kind of hard to see that if it's loose, but it is loose. Sometimes depending on your position, if you have a big ledge or not, uh, you have to lean up and pull on the anchor like I did to get that thing off. Other times you can just easily unclip it. All right, so now you can see I'm actually all on my rappel system. Here's my auto block right here holding pretty much all my weight and my ATC is ready to descend with. Here, if I just move down a bit, now you can see all the slack is out of the system and I'm ready to go. Okay, so here's just a different ankle so that way you can see what I was talking about. There's my anchor, two points equalized in a figure eight. And then I have my two lockers right here with the middle marker of the rope and my master point. Going down to my ATC, loaded up with another locker that's locked. Here's my <clears throat> rappel extension. Going down to my girth hitched harness right there. Here's the extra part of the extension, which is just, uh, I just clipped it off there to keep it out of my way. And then <clears throat> here's my third hand right there on another locking carrier that's locked. And then since I took my hands off for a while, I just tied a knot. But now I just rappel on down, which is kind of the most fun part, right? So when I rappel with this third hand, I'm just gonna put my, I usually do left hand on top, right hand below it. And I just push down with my left hand to disengage the auto block, because it all works on friction. Once I get it low enough, the rope will just start sliding right through. See my anchor up there? I'm just pulling this thing down. Actually, it's kind of a bit of friction. After you get going like 10 feet or so, it feels like it, it gets a bit smoother. Another thing is if you put all your body weight on the rappel, it really helps you go down. So as I was making this video and I was talking through the steps and everything, I realized really that there's so much extra things I'm breezing over. And even though I showed you sort of one thing from the start to the finish, there's just so much nuance and other aspects of rappelling that really you just want to take a class with someone who knows more than you and talks you through the steps. This is just one way. There's a million different ways to rappel and a million different gadgets for rappelling. And it's really just, you just got to get out there and experiment with your thing. But you want to make sure that you have a good baseline of what you're doing because it's a pretty dangerous sport. You know, if you screw things up, you're going to the ground. And so, and the reason why I'm making this video is I've watched other people's videos on YouTube, especially with all these more basic skills like sport anchors and rappelling and other things. Uh, a lot of people are doing stuff poorly and sometimes just wrong. Um, other times uh, it's not presented well or um, is out of date information. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there. So really your best bet is to go to a guide service, get trained professionals to teach you this stuff. I'm happy to do that if you wanna hire me to learn how to repel, but I know that's not available to everyone. And for you know the folks that can't afford instruction on how to do these dangerous things, and they've finally managed to scrape together the money that they need just for the gear uh, for repelling, I uh, wanted something to be out there on the internet that was a bit better than the other videos I've seen. Not all of them are bad, but um, yeah, some of them are not that great. And keep in mind, it is different too if you're like a firefighter repel and doing repelling, that's different from a climber repelling versus a rope skills course repelling. It's actually quite a different setup most of the time than it would be for climber repelling. So this is more of a climber repelling type thing. If you do anything different in your recreational repelling, then you can leave a comment I know some people tie off 
the rope like figure eight on a bite to the anchor so that way both strands are independent of each other which is totally fine um, if you are doing single pitch rappelling and you can access the top I showed you guys a retrievable rappel where you can pull the rope from the bottom and get your rope back which is a very common climbing type rappelling it's just there's so much to it and I can't show you everything in like a 30 minute video so there's a mosquito on me we're getting to mosquito season if you want to see more videos like this, then consider subscribing to my channel. I try to get them out somewhat frequently, but with uh, my work and I'm out in the mountains a whole lot, uh, it's kind of hard to do them exactly every week, but I try to be as frequent as possible. And um, if you want to go more in depth with any of the skills I showed you, then consider checking out some of my other videos. I have one on repel backups. I have one on um, repel extensions. I have a video on harnesses, a video on ropes, uh, you know, a lot of the more uh, like the small things I showed you here that goes a lot more in depth with all of those items. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, be safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next video. Free hanging double rope with Paul. kind of hard to show in the video how big this lapel is. There's a tagline. <laughs> Past halfway.